Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your Unify network. A lot of people have been asking me how I do this. And in this video, I will go over some of the things that I do. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, and I'll put the link in the description below. The first thing I'll talk about in optimizing your Unify network is bottleneck. So if you're noticing that you have slow speeds in your network, you first want to make sure that you have a good enough internet connection. And if you don't, you may want to purchase a higher speed from your ISP. Another bottleneck that some people don't realize on the UDM Pro, if you're using these eight ports to connect to other switches, these eight ports only have a one gigabit backplane. The one gigabit backplane means you're sharing one gigabit throughout all of these eight ports. And then for our switch connections, I have three generation two switches here. What you're gonna wanna do, you would want to use a DAC cable or a fiber cable with SFPs plugging in from your UDM Pro SFP port down to one of your SFP ports on your switches. So on most newer switches, you're gonna have SFP Plus, which is capable of 10 gigabit links. So from the UDM Pro, we'll have a 10 gigabit link, and then between our switches, we'll have a 10 gigabit link. You wanna make sure that if in your middle switch, you don't uh, connect it with a copper connection between this switch and that switch with a one gigabit backbone. In that case, you're gonna have a bottleneck from these other switches going upwards to your UDM Pro. Another way we could optimize our network within Unify, if we have the new Gen 2 switches, they do have something called Layer 3 switching, which is still in beta, so we won't talk about it too much. But how it works, right now, if you don't have Layer 3 switching on, you're gonna be doing all your VLAN routing through your UDM Pro. So what happens, say VLAN 10 needs to talk to VLAN 20 on this switch right here and we're on a host computer that is on this switch tagged with VLAN 10. The VLAN 10 will go through all these switches up to your UDM Pro. It will make the routing decision and then go back down to this switch where we need to reach VLAN 20. With layer three switching, it will know all the routing processes and it will just route up to this switch. So it's a few less hops to get to that end host. And how you would create the layer three switching functionality on the Gen 2 switches, you would create the new network, I'll just call it Cody, and then put a VLAN tag of 55, and then down below it will say your gateway type. So the default will just be your default router, whatever router that is, if you're using the USG, UDM Pro, or USG Pro 4, and then here it will say switch. So then if you have multiple Gen 2 switches, you could specify which one will be the gateway. The next thing we'll talk about is picking the right access points for your environment. If you're gonna be in a high density environment, you're gonna to wanna to buy the Unify APHD access points, which are meant for high density environments with lots of devices connecting to it. If you need a further away distance, you're gonna to wanna to go with the UAP AC long range. We also have something that's called multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. So this means how many radios are in our access point. So within the Unify UAP ACLR, there are, it's a dual band radio, which means there's two radios. If you think about the access point as a highway, you would only have two lanes of traffic. So the more cars that are going down it, the tighter it's gonna get packed. If you get something like the UAP AC Pro, you're gonna have three lanes of traffic as it has three radios in it. And if you go with any of their HD models, there are four by four multi-user MIMO, which will give you four lanes of traffic. One of the biggest thing within our Unify network is gonna be our wireless network. So we need to figure out what channels we wanna put those access points onto so that they're not overlapping. Right now, this is just three square boxes, but this is my house. So I have three levels of the house. This is my top floor and I have an office right in this room. And then there's another office over here and then there's a stairwell and then we have the master bedroom that's going all the way over here. In my office, I have a Nano HD. In the master bedroom, there is a Unify APAC light. And then on the main level of our house in our living room, I have a Unify in-wall HD access point. 
And in the basement, I have a Unify APAC Pro. Here we need to make our channel selection so that we're not overlapping. Three main channels on the 2.4 gigahertz band would be channel one, six, and channel 11. So we wanna make sure that these are never overlapping. So my office access point, we could set this to channel one. The master bedroom access point, we could put on channel six. The living room access point, we could put on channel 11. And now those are our main channels that we've used up. So we want to make the basement access point as far away from channel 11 as we can. So we will put that onto channel one. And for our five gigahertz band, we have a lot more channel selection that we could use. So here you can see we have channel 36, 40, 44, 48, 149, 153, 157, and 161. They also have something on Unify that's called DFS, which is used for radar signals, so military radars or weather radars. You wanna to try to avoid using those channels. If radar is being used, you may get your connection dropped. So the same theory goes, so we would put channel 36 up here on the top for our five gigahertz band, and then channel 40 for our master bedroom, channel 44 for our living room access point, and then we could use channel 48 for our basement access point. So now I'll show you how to change the channel selection on your access point. By default, they're just set to auto. So we'll start off with my office access point, which we're gonna put on channel one. So you just go to config. We go down to channels. So the channel width that you wanna use for the 2.4 gigahertz band will always be 20. If you go to 40, you will run into interference problems. On the five gigahertz band, you could use the 40 band. If you bump it up to 80, that will give you more bandwidth, but you may have larger interference issues. So for the 2.4 gigahertz band, I'm gonna to go to channel and I'm gonna set it to channel one. If you have a lot of access points within your home, you may want to set the transmit power to low or medium. Right now it's set to auto. I'm gonna set mine on low as I have quite a few access points in a small area. And then for our five gigahertz band, we're gonna set this to channel 36 and then we'll cue the changes and press apply. So now we have to do that for each one of our other access points. So our next access point will be our bedroom access point. So we said this is going to be on channel six. Transmit power, I'll put on low. And then for the five gigahertz band, we're gonna have it on channel 40 and we'll cue the changes. The next one will be our living room access point, which we're gonna put on to channel 11 for our 2.4 gigahertz, low power, and then we will put it on to channel 44. And this is gonna vary between home to home or business to business. The best way to get a proper measure of how well your access points are working is to do a heat map. And there are multiple different applications you could use. I use NetApp to do these heat maps. Unfortunately, I don't have a drawing of my home or I would walk you guys through that process. And the last access point we need to do is our basement access point. So we're gonna to wanna to put our basement access point onto channel one and then low power, and then for the five gigahertz band, we will wanna put it on 48 Q changes. A couple other settings that you may wanna turn off, if you're not using wireless uplinks, so if you're not wirelessly uplinking to another access point, say a unified beacon HD, you'll wanna turn that off as it reaches out with a ping test and uses some airtime. So under your site settings, if you go to uplink connectivity monitor, you wanna make sure that is disabled. If you are using wireless uplinks, you need to have this turned on. So we also wanna make sure that auto optimized network is turned off so that it doesn't switch anything that we have already hard coded onto our Unify access point. We want these to stay statically assigned to what we have found to be the best non overlapping channels for our network. So there is a feature within the Wi-Fi networks that is called fast roaming. So what roaming is, it means it will switch. If you're walking around your home or business, it will switch you from going from access point one to access point two as you're walking around. Fast roaming right now is still in beta. We don't wanna have any beta features on as they're still working on improving them. So anything that says beta, I have completely turned off. So threat management, we don't have that turned on at all. As I found it has been buggy and sometimes slows down my network. 
A couple other things you could check if we click on the access point, you could click on your channel utilization and just press plus. You could see on the two gigahertz band that we're using channel six and the green shows that that's our RX frame. So that's our receive frames. The little bit of yellow shows that's our transmit frames. And then this other yellow is our interference. We could also do a scan to see what channels are most being used within our area. So we could go over to tools and right here you could see it's an RF environment scan. So we could do the two gigahertz and we could do the five gigahertz. So if we press scan, it will turn off our access point while it's doing the scan. So we'll press confirm and it will take a few minutes to show us what is being utilized. The scan's now completed and you can see across the board, it's pretty much the same. So channel one, six and 11, we could use any one of those. The lower the number, the stronger your strength is going to be. And you can do the same thing for the five gigahertz channel as well. These aren't the best tests, but these are something that could give you some insight into what is being most utilized. You could also download the NetSpot app for free and it will show you every access point in the channels that are around you. So if you have close neighbors, it will show you the channels that are being used. So if we go into the NetSpot app, which this is right here, you can see on all on the left hand side, these are all the SSIDs that are being broadcasted in my area. We can see all the channels that are being used for the 2.4 gigahertz band, as well as for the five gigahertz band and we could see the signal strength. And you could base your channel selection around this. If you have lots of neighbors around you like I do, most of them will be on channel one as that's what the ISPs provide them. A lot of my neighbors, as you can see, it just looks like they're using their ISP modem router. One other very important factor within your Unify network to optimize it to make, is to make sure that your firmware is always up to date. So right now you can see that I have firmware updates available on pretty much every one of my access points as well as my switches. That is because that is beta firmware. I am up to date with the latest stable firmware that Unify has posted. So make sure you do that. That's it for this video. I will try to make another video showing heat maps so you guys can see how those work with the NetSpot app. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.